So what do you make of the recent UFO hearings? Yeah, so I, I, I watched them and um, I found them to be interesting. Um, I don't have a lot to say about them in the sense that, you know, the specifics, you know, do I think that's, you know, we've moved ahead with them um, with the topic of UFOs and things like that. Um, I would look at it in the sense that, uh, um, here, give me some time because I have thought about this, but of course now I've blanked out on it. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you some. I'll give you some time. So, do you want me to just be silent while you think? Yeah, just give me some some okay. silent time right, to, okay. to like right. kind of. Um, okay, so. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. This is it. All right. Me looking at this. Okay, looking at these hearings, um, and based on my experience of the last few years, well, more than a few years, maybe six or seven years, wherein I identified what I'd call like a fight club of people who are involved in, you know, the study of UAPs and UFOs. Um, and what I mean by fight club is I mean that people, these people are compartmentalized and they don't talk to one another. Um, I can't see how a hearing, a congressional hearing is going to pierce any of the information within that fight club. I think what's happening is that there's a recognition that there is this, this group of people who do this kind of study. They probably, you know, there are probably different factions. In fact, there are different factions and groups of them doing pretty high level study of this stuff, but they're not talking to each other. Okay. Um, they're not talking to each other because that's how they've been trained. So, there, so whereas, you know, we've already talked to you and I about academics and this kind of academic ethos of sharing our sources to further and progress knowledge. Okay, this is this is actually a method and we believe in it. And we even believe that this is right. Okay. Well this is, you know, and for better or worse. It could be, you know, I don't I now I, I was so surprised to hear that well, I shouldn't have been surprised. The the fight club um and the compartmentalization of these groups is necessary for these groups to further their knowledge, okay? But it doesn't work in the same way that we think democratic progression of knowledge works. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It works differently. It works almost the opposite. So when I see the hearings, I hear that it's a very, it's, I, I think I posted something on Twitter where I said, this isn't the valet level of talking about the topic, right? It's not going to get that way. It won't get that way maybe ever okay we can't expect it to so for what it was um it was it was okay you know for what it was it was okay it was something that recognizes at least and, and modifies the stigma that's been attached to ufos for the past 50 years okay and that's a good thing that's good for me because I wrote about it. <laughs> and it's good for other academics who want to go in and, and study it. It's good for people who've seen UFOs and have felt like they couldn't tell anyone about it. So it's good in that way. Okay. Um, but is it, you know, frankly, I think that the fight club of compartmentalized people who study this is going to continue, probably get more funding even now because of this. But that's what I see as the consequence of this. I don't think I have, um, I, I don't see these two groups talking. Yeah. So it's not disclosure per se. It's more the creation of the environment that allows disclosure slash research by removing the stigma. Well, research, re, re, remember research has already been happening. So um, I think it's removing the stigma. 